Um, our keynote speaker actually needs no introduction. Yukihiro Matsumoto, affectionately known to us as Mats, is the creator and the steward of the Ruby programming language. He has pre-recorded his keynote uh, and a short Q&A answering some of your questions. Please enjoy. Um, hello, uh, this is Matt, the creator of Ruby language and uh, a person who triggered everything in this conference. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, lessons from the past as a keynote. Uh, some may know I love programming language. Uh, the programming language in general is my kind of life work for me. And uh, from that love, I created my own programming language and then it gradually became Ruby. And uh, since my love and motivation, so that I devoted so much to the, the you know, developing the language, then uh, the language would change everything uh, about my life and uh, the adult life. And uh, partially, the Ruby changed the world. And uh, since, so you may call me the language geek. Then, so, so the I'll tell you a little bit about the the programming language trivia, and then, uh, and then uh, I tell you about the lessons I have learned through this this programming language and the uh, experience from the Ruby development. Okay, the. First question is, the, what is the first programming language? But, uh, some may say uh, the first programming language in the world is Fortran, which is uh, which developed in 1954. But uh, in reality, the, there, there was a programming language beforehand, uh, predates the Portland, which is Plan Calcul. Uh, Plan Calcul was a programming language designed by the German engineer, the Konrad Zuse. I may pro pronounce wrong, but uh, and uh, who invented the the very ancient computer named the Z Drive, <laughs> and uh, he. He found out that uh, for those kind of computers, the the human brain are too limited to express the idea in binary. So the he come up with the idea of the programming language. Actually, at that time in 1942, there was no term for programs or software for the computers. The yeah, programs was to the, you know, like a program in in the, you know, theater or something. But uh, he invented the term plan calcul, you know, it's the plan for the calculation or something like that. And, uh, and it found out in plan, in the language plan calcul, we had uh, assignments, if statements, loops, and uh, structures, subroutines, arrays, assertions, exceptions, and even goal-directed execution. That is, this is this is kind of modern for the programming language invented in 1942. It is kind of it is kind of surprising. Uh, it is far more advanced than Fortran. But uh, since the concept of the language was too advanced to the to the to the age, so that uh, it was not adapted, accepted by the world. Actually, Plan Calcul was lost in history. 
that no no one knew uh, the language Plancalcu for a long, long time. And then no one knew the Plancalcu. Uh, in 1992 to 1995, the, the engineer, Konrad Suze, uh, left some kind of the, you know, the design uh, memo. But uh, the full spec of the the language was first published in 1972, much, much later. Then, the, at that time, the no implementation available the, until 1998. The first, uh, first compiler for the plan calcul was implemented in 1998, which is even newer than Ruby programming language. But the, the, from this fact, we we have we can learn the idea itself is not enough. So that we need to have some kind of uh, useful implementation to prove the idea, and then uh, the first say the others about the idea. So that we need um, we need implementation. The and then the any systems should grow with users. You know, uh, the Ruby was first invented, <laughs> created in 1993, 30 years ago, and then first published in 1995. But uh, this 30 years, we, uh, it's not my work. You know, the, the community works together to make Ruby better programming language. And uh, that kind of the community effort truly make Ruby Ruby. Yeah, we we can learn that uh, the idea about the you know the one we the community is the key for the success. Okay, next question: the, what is the simplest programming language? Uh, syntax syntactically. Uh, I there are so many simple programming languages, but I named uh, Lisp, Fault, and APL, all invented in 1960s. Uh, not popular now, but uh, uh, be probably because you know if the programming lang language simplicity is not not the first goal, the the inventor, the creator of the Perl programming language, Larry Wall, once said, uh, if a language is simple, a software will be more complex because total amount of complexity is constant. Uh, actually, I lost the English version of the programming Perl, so that I, this is not the word-to-word -word quote, but uh, he, he, he said something like that. So that I can, we can learn Simple, at least for the programming language, sim being simple is not always best. Since human mind is complex, and uh, so the, we need to follow a mental model. So we have to struggle with the complex, the, the tasks and complex issues, then the software will reflect that kind of the complexity. So that, uh, programming language would help should help that to address that kind of complexity. The other notable programming language, the PL1, uh, which is the combination of the Fulton and the Cobol. Uh, in 1970s, the Fulton and the Cobol was so popular, and then the someone got the idea of, okay, if we have the photon for scientific computing and then the COBOL for the, the office software, the business software. So if we combine those programming, two programming languages, so that, that would be nice. And then they tried. And then the result is we still have Many programming language, uh, actually, 
we still have many softwares written in Fortran, especially in the sci scientific field, academia. And then we still have a COBOL software uh, in, say, the big business company or uh, banks. And then, yeah, the ratio is getting lower and lower, but, uh, but, but we still have uh, the written in those two programming language. Uh, but uh, PL1 is nearly abandoned. The, the other example is Ada. Named, named uh, after the, the first programmer, the Ada Loveless. The, in the Department of Def, Def, Defense in, in the United States, decided so that we have a lot of systems uh, from the control, from controlling the, you know, the, the, fighters and uh, the battleships or missiles and uh, raiders and a uh, lot of systems. And uh, we they had a the lot of programming language for, for each systems. But uh, if we can uh, write those variety of software in one programming language, we can reduce the uh, burden of learning new programming language. So that they did, they designed the one one true programming language, and, and the name name that language Ada, but uh, yeah, Ada is still used in the de Department of Defense, as far as I I've heard. <clears throat> but still, but still, uh, the <clears throat> the majority of the soft software developer do not know about anything about uh, Ada programming language, so. <clears throat> because we have the tendency of the creeping featureism. So the, the, we have many requests from users and uh, the, we are eager to answer those requests. And then, <clears throat> then we have the tendency, we see the tendency of the systems will uh, easily grow big until too big to understand. So that only our ability, a limitation of our brain to handle the complexity is the limitation of the software complexity. The complexity is our enemy. And uh, that, that means the bigger is not always, being bigger, not always the better. <coughs> Okay, this is second lesson. Okay, third lesson from the language uh, pro. You may not know, but uh, 20 something years ago, the pro was the king of programming language. And then uh, pro 1.0 was released in 1986 or maybe 87 or some, somewhere around that. And then uh, pro 5.0, was released in 1993 when the Ruby was first developed, that development. And then, <clears throat> and at that time, you know, the Pro was the king. So that I borrowed many ideas from Pro at the beginning of the design of programming uh, Ruby. And then 30 years later, now, uh, what version do you expect the Pro is? It is, Power 5.38. So that this 30 years, no major version released. And the power has changed very slightly. Okay, we, they had many, you know, enhancement and improvement in the language, but the basic structure is same. So, you know, the they worried them. Actually, they worried about that kind of, you know, stability and uh, stasis in the community. So the year 2000, in the Pearl Conference, the, in the keynote of the, the creator, Larry Wall, and uh, he said, we are bored. And uh, in Pearl community, in the Pearl Conferences, the, someone in the, the core team 
said we're be <laughs> unless we can come up with something that will excite the community because everyone's getting bored and going off and doing other things. Yeah. And then they started new project to remove the historical world. So that they started correcting uh, the something named the RFC, request for comment. And uh, they received 361 RFCs. And then the, the creator, Larry Wall, uh, read them all and investigate them all and uh, designed new version of programming language. And then he wrote some kind of the design uh, description of the language named Apocalypse and uh, named his, lang his new language, Pro6. But uh, do, you, do you use Pro6? Now, Pro6 does not get popular. And uh, recently, uh, since the Pro6 was too advanced from Power 5, and uh, they are too different, so that uh, they are not they are not back backward compatible or even forward compatible. And uh, so they abandoned the name Pro6 and they renamed it to Raku, which, which sounds like kind of Japanese, but... Uh, uh, so that we have learned two things from Pro. One is the boring pitfalls, the biggest enemy of uh, boring is the big, biggest enemy of open source software or any project driven by motivation. Uh, open source software needs to keep moving forward uh, unless the, the community will you know, the member of the community will, will be bored and uh, go, go away to, to other programming language. So the, we need to attract the community. That's one, one lesson. The second lesson is second system syndrome. Uh, when we recreate the systems like a Pro6 to, uh, compared to the Pro5, we often become too ambitious to solve everything at once. And then that kind of scrap and build approach is a bad idea. Yeah, we should evolve the gradually so that unless we've done too much, and then, you know, then system will be will not attract the community or you know, too big to implement or something like that. Ruby had a similar things. I actually, I once followed the Pro6 idea because in the early 2000s, Pro was too popular and uh, the removing the historical world is the kind of the trend in the programming language. So the in the, the 2003 RubyConf keynote, I proposed the idea of the Ruby 2, not the Ruby 2 over we have, but we had, but uh, the Ruby 2 is kind of like a Pro 6. And then because we have Pro 6, we, which we, uh, they, they try to recreate the language. And then the Python community was working on the Python 3000, which is gra uh, gradually, eventually it became the Pro 3, uh, Pi I mean Pi Python 3. And then, then we started the, the uh, corrected the, the ideas from the community named, the, uh, not the RSFC, but we call it the RCR, which is, which stands for the Ruby change request or something like that. And then, it would, I get, I get many ideas, and then some of them are too, too ambitious. <laughs> some of them are tri too trivial, but uh, it it was it was very fun. And uh, but uh, <laughs> I was too lazy to bookkeep those ideas, and uh, 
eventually I got tired of managing them and uh, gave up the Ruby two project. And then instead, so that we start, we keep the current implementation and then replace them the uh, part to part. So the soon after that, we have released the Ruby 1.9 in 2007, which we replaced the virtual machine, the, the Yao virtual machine that we currently use. And then, and then we added, we overhauled the string uh, implementation, string class implementation to support the, the multilingualization, M17N. That, yeah, we have we support a lot of encoding, including the Japanese one, Chinese one, Russian one, Taiwanese, and uh, European ones. And uh, those those encoding stuff is implemented in the Ruby one nine. And uh, the Ruby one nine had a gradual change instead of the scrap and build, but it's still incompatible. In especially in the string handling, so the so that we had some kind of the tragedy of the five plus years of the community split. So the, some people still keep using the older version Ruby one eight, and then which is compatible to the the prior prior versions, and then some the majority of the community and then even core teams use the Ruby one nine. And it, which is the newer, faster, and the more powerful, but they're still slightly incompatible. But uh, I have learned the lessons from this this situation. So that that which is the compatibility matters. So that uh, we keep compatibility unless absolutely necessary. And then, and then it's much better than the fifty year five plus years of the community split is the tragedy, but it's much less than the, the 15 years or 30 years of the community split. But uh, why we can have the shorter uh, period of the community split? I think the reason is the, the vir new virtual machine. It was 3 to 50 times faster than the previous uh, tree walking interpreter. So the performance heals all sorrows. Then we had the Ruby 2.x. We have introduced the keyword arguments and the refinements and the module prepend, which is, yeah, module prepend is smaller, but uh, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I prefer that, that method. And uh, it's kind of the performance uh, aspect oriented programming. And then in this period, we had uh, some kind of the end of rails illusions. Uh, this is a hype cycle graph. And then the visibility goes up in, say, 2006, 2007, 2008. And then we have the, we were the king of the web application development. But yes. Uh, Later, some years later, so that we have the Node.js and then use JavaScript as a backend, or maybe the some programming language uh, become uh, introduced the static typing, and the the popularity of the Ruby is relatively uh, decreased. And then I think now we are in the the part of the productivity, and then. The following those kind of the you know disappointment, the TOB index that drops. The, we are at the the number seven in the highest, but we have we now have the seventeen or less uh, in the in the ranking. So the people claim that Ruby is dead da, 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 uh, because Ruby gems have less GitHub stars on the. Uh, GitHub, or because Ruby does have static typing, or because Ruby is no longer shiny language, and then really, <laughs> uh, the at at least in my opinion, no, <laughs> of course, uh, any technologies cannot stay shiny forever. So that 
Ruby has 30 years of history, and then Rails is almost 20 years old. So the more history, more burden. So the but still, we are creating values. That yeah, people come and go. So that there yeah, some people come to Ruby and the, the, the enjoy Ruby programming for for some years, and then then move to some other programming language and the Rust, Go, uh, Java, TypeScript, or whatever. That, that's okay. That's okay. It's okay as long as we grow. Uh, so the okay audience. <laughs> Uh, could you raise your hand if you you are the first timer in this conference? Yeah, unfortunately, I can't see you <laughs> right now. But uh, okay, you are new blood. If we see hands raised, we have hope. You know, the if the the Ruby community in general uh, as a whole is dec declining. The, we see no new people in the gathering. But if we see hand of the newcomers, then we have hope. Uh, and uh, 2020, we have this uh, Ruby 3.0, and uh, real, we implemented the real keyword, uh, keyword arguments and the pattern matching, JIT compiler, and heap compaction. The, I think we are at the tipping point. Say, uh, we are in the, the Prado of Productivity in Prado of Productivity in this graph. But uh, this stability is a trap. It might cause boring pitfall, pitfall like I said before. The, the only paranoid can survive. This is the, you know, Intel proverbs. So how can we survive? How can we survive? How can we keep Ruby alive for next 30 years? Or even 100 years? Now focus on lessons learned from above. From the uh, lessons we have learned, the idea is it's not enough. Simple, simple is not always best. Bigger, not always better. Beware of boring pitfalls and beware of second sister syndrome. I have some goals. The, the first one is to keep Ruby, Ruby forever. So that we are not going to add that note, uh, going to add a type declaration to the language and then no big syntax change is expected and then no big semantic change is expected. But, but the, we need to progress to avoid the, the boring pitfall to keep moving forward. We have to keep moving forward. But, uh, we are going to improve the performance. So for example, the YJet improved the uh, Rails application performance to by 20% or something. That, that's wonderful, that's wonderful. And then the, the, the other team in the Shopify uh, kind of improved uh, working on the improving the, the memory management of the Ruby uh, Ruby virtual machine, and uh, they uh, trying to make it faster and then uh, uh, reduce more memory. And then uh, those work are supported by Shopify and others, and then uh, I we I really appreciate that. Uh, still, and I yeah we are working on the concurrency as well. The, in, we are in the multi-core age, so that to improve the performance of the software, the, we need to uh, utilize concurrency. Then the, we we have we have Gil, but uh, but still we have racked and fibers to improve the performance of the multi uh, on the multi-core. And then uh, thanks for the cookpad and the stores, which which are the the new the employer of the uh, for the Koichi and Mami Mami, and then the other companies helped uh, helped on those things. And then now and we are working and encouraging supporting tools like Rubicop, Steep, Sobe, and a lot more. But because you know. 
30 years ago, we have no supporting. We had no supporting too. We just have the editors, VI or Emacs, and just write down the software. The only supporting tool was the Ruby mode in Emacs, which I wrote, <laughs> the, the original one. But uh, right now, we have the VS Code and the, the, the code completion, and the auth indentation, then the, the pop-up documents, or the, uh, the lint, the, the lot of tools. And then the productivity has been improved a lot. Uh, by those, by those uh, supporting tools, so that present day the language productivity is not not only determined by the language design, okay, uh, the human or uh, friendly programming language, but uh, uh, those supporting tools, uh, well, uh, those supporting tools are more more, more important. So that we are trying to supporting supporting tools. For example, the Ruby 3.3, which will be introduced, uh, uh, released in next month, will be shipped with the, the gem named Prism, which is the, the better browser. Name. Uh, the Ruby has, of course, the Ruby has browser. But uh, the other supporting tools has its uh, their own browsers, like uh, Rubocop has browsers uh, through the, the browser gems, and uh, and uh, Sobe has browsers, and uh, uh, Steep has browsers, and a lot of browsers. And then we have browser gems, and the browser gems, Ruby browser gems, and uh, a lot of other browsers. And then they have to re-implement the browsers again and again, so that there. There are there is need for the you know the process that can be used as a used as a library, the so universally available process. So the, it can be used by the language, it can be used by the tools, it can be by the you know linters and the many other tools. Okay, and it should be independent from the virtual machine, so that uh, if you are the supporting tool writers in a if you use the the puzzle gems, the whole Ruby binary, whole Ruby virtual machine, the uh, the class libraries is come along come along with the, the library. It's not ideal. It's not ideal. So the uh, the better puzzle should be independent from the Ruby the runtime implementation. And then the for the supporting tools, they are not the free written Ruby. The compiler just says errors. This is syntax error. And then, but uh, for editors, the, you have to you have to uh, parse the half baked Ruby programs uh, in in development. So that it should be error tolerant, so that you, it, it can handle the you know the the Ruby programs that can that have errors in it. And then. Uh, Uh, now the JRuby, Truffle Ruby, and the Puzzle James, and a lot more uh, all have already used uh, the Prism Gem. So the and then Prism Gem itself is implemented by the the teams from Shopify, especially Kevin Newton. Thank you. And then Steep and Type Prof uh, started typing without type type language. Type declaration and the language change, and then that that work is supported by the Square, Cookpad, and stores. And thanks for uh, I appreciate them. I have many things to be done to improve the developer experience. Do you have any idea? If you have idea of the uh, the improving supporting tools and uh, improving the language, just tell us. The all ideas matters. Unfortunately. For the many for many reasons like the compatibilities and the the other the the you no know, issue conflict or something like that. So that I might not uh, accept your ideas, but uh, I am interested in all the idea from everyone. Uh, just tell us your idea.
through the issue tracker, the bugsrubylang.org, or uh, GitHub issues, or whatever. Just tell us. Uh, we have Ruby now. And then we want to keep Ruby alive. Your idea, opinion matters. Just, just come join us. Just come join us. You don't have to be uh, the ex the C expert, C programming language expert, but uh, you have, you know, if you're very serious about the future of Ruby, just just tell your idea, just tell your opinion. Uh, the Ruby community, uh, most precious treasure of Ruby, I think. Uh, you are part of the community because you're at the, the Ruby conference. And the uh, community needs new blood. So that we really, I, I, and we really uh, needs, uh, welcome, welcome you. And then uh, attract young programmers. To attract uh, young programmers, most important things in job and job and money. So the keep Ruby attractive for companies. Uh, the Rails claims the it is the one person framework, and uh, Ruby is the uh, I mean the Ra Ruby on Rails is uh, optimized to the you know the smaller team, and uh, we we are optimized to smaller small starts, and uh, I'll tell you you are not Google. So that you don't have to prepare for the future like Google. Uh, do not try to be like Google. Uh, Basecamp is written in Ruby on Rails. Of course, it's it's led by the DHT himself, and uh, it makes big money. And uh, the DHT is pretty rich. And uh, and uh, Shopify is written in Ruby on Rails. And uh, it makes makes big money. And uh, GitHub is still written in uh, Ruby, I think. Uh, most part, uh, some part is replaced by the TypeScript, though. But uh, you know, if you work, if you are going to start a new business, new project, new system, uh, do not prepare to be like Google. Just Prove your idea upon the upon the platform or language optimized to the smallest teams, and then tell your friends the value of the agility. The, uh, being agile is more important than being prepared to be Google. Uh, the future. Uh, I often asked by the people, when is Ruby for? That's good questions. And then uh, we have yearly release. Okay. Uh, to, to, 2023, we, we have the uh, Ruby 3.3. Uh, and then uh, we plan releasing uh, Ruby 3.4 in 2024. Then, and then uh, we are. Uh, Currently, keeping the single-digit versions a policy. That means that 2029, we might have Ruby 3.9. The next year, 2030, uh, we are out of digits, so that we are going to have the Ruby 4.0. Uh, the I have random crazy ideas for the future which is the, say, uh, package systems, IoT compiler, sterling committee, and the design playground. I will explain one by one. The package systems, the, we often have the name conflict between versions and the, the, the independent gems. And, uh, that kind of, that can be solved by the namespace isolation. But, uh, Addressing versions and the dependency CL. Uh, version. 
Actually, the my Ruby two ide- most of the my Ruby two ad- ideas was implemented in Ruby two on two point oh and Ruby three point oh, but uh, the the package systems the the namespace isolation is uh, uh, the only one things left for my Ruby two ideas, so that that we will be we will be working on it. Ahead of time compiler is one idea for the future because performance matters, and then if we put the our software less dynamic, it will make our software run faster. And then maybe using the profile guide, guided type information so that we can compile. Uh, we can do the ahead of time compile. Uh, much much faster. They're running fully native code, and then and uh, we are thinking that keep we by using some kind of the ahead of time compiler to the we can run the the run Ruby as native code, and then but still keep Ruby Ruby. Unlike Crystal, you know, Crystal is the great lang- great compiler uh, programming language, but uh, uh, but it is the you know the static type systems, and uh, it is different. In that sense, we are different. Uh, they are different from from Ruby. Now uh, we still need exper- a lot of experiment, and then the other idea is the steering committee. Uh, I'm I'm old enough to to retire, so that uh, I don't know. Maybe in ten years or twenty years, I will be retired. So that who will succeed the the this leadership position, the dictator? I ha- currently I have no idea, but uh, probably we can train our successors and you know, our successor candidates. About the 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 some kind of the design playground, that we are going to have some kind of the the fork of Ruby, and then which is which is fragile, and then the they try new ideas, and then maybe they fail, and then but uh, they just drop that that failed failed ideas. Okay, in Ruby, is we are not allowed to fail because the. Even in the sl- slightest feature we added, that someone use so that we cannot remove them, we cannot remove them at all. But uh, in that kind of the playground, we can try to experiment, and uh, you know, feeling the the you know psychological safety for the language design. Uh, it it will be like a design test bed for the future Ruby language, or maybe the play place for the experiments, and then the place to experience about the language design. Uh, then the, the, we can train the new generation of the language designers. Uh, this is just a vague idea, a vague and crazy ideas for the future. But in any way. I have. We have a lot to the thing. Lot of things to do. We so that we will keep moving forward. We will keep moving. Uh, the the improving the the language. We will uh lengthen our stride to for the future, and we will create a value. As a community, and then come join us so that write software, write great software in Ruby, and uh, they contribute to the Ruby itself, or the write, write gems, write uh, supporting tools, and uh, or maybe write prolex to the, the to the, the C Ruby, J Ruby, Truffle Ruby, or whatever, and uh, to keep us moving forward, and uh, to create a bit better future. Uh, I think that that's the power of love. The Ruby is no longer one month project for decades, and uh, we we invite you to join us to 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 the to improve the world. 
better place. Say, and the organizers、uh, collected some questions from the audience and the community so that I pick some of them and then they try to answer. The first one is the Do you think we'll ever truly be able to remove the global interpreter lock?、Uh, this is, this is、uh, the, the good question. And then,、uh, This is the very topic of the, this year's uh, you, uh, the, keynote, the keynote of the Euroco this year. And, then, and then I've heard the, in this conference, is, you, you might, the Euroco organizer will show you the, my, the recall, recording of the, the, my Euroco keynote. And then, but、uh, in short, Uh, the removing the gill in, in Ruby community, we call it the GVM, global VM lock. And then, in theory, it is possible, but in, pra- in practice, it is nearly impossible. And then, we have less motivation to, re- to remove it than the Python community because of the Uh, the web applications, the major battlefield of the Ruby programming language is uh, relatively uh, easier to make concurrency. Like, uh, say, uh, we have the Puma, Unicorn,、uh, or the Pitchwalk, which is the application,、uh, the application servers which can handle the, that kind of the concurrency. So instead, instead of removing the GVL, so that We are、uh, providing the raptors and the fiber schedulers. And、uh, currently, we do not have the global virtual machine lock, but the, the raptor local、uh, virtual machine lock. So the,、uh, if you create the, the raptor, you don't have to worry about the, the, the VM lock. Then, Uh, the, the Koichi, we, who is in charge of the r a c t o r implementation, is working on the, the improving the, the r a c t o r thread the combination. So, the, so the, in the near future, we will enjoy the, the performance of the, the concurrency without removing the GBL. Next question. Uh, what are your hope to Ruby as it relates to the WebAssembly? So, that,、uh, since the last version, Ruby 3, 3.2, so that we, we can compile Ruby virtual machine to, to WebAssembly. So, that means that you can run the, the, the canonical Ruby the virtual machine in, in the browser. But still,、uh, the, we are on top of the The WASM,、uh, WASM runtime,、um, then the we, can, we have to compile, compile the whole the Ruby virtual machine on top of the WASM, that, which is kind of the inefficient. So, the, the recently, the WASM p r o v i d e the, the garbage collectors, and the, so the, I, I just hope, I, I wish we can、uh, remove the, the globe. The, the, Garbage collector from the, the WASM implementation of the CRuby, then the, the we can rely on the, the WASM GC and、uh, some other stuff. s But uh, uh, I hope, I wish the situation and the perform, performance of, of the Ruby on WASM will be improved.、Uh, question three. Uh, do you have any thoughts on the future of RBS? Do you think there is an opportunity to combine the work on RBS and Solbet?、Uh, one thing, in the new feature,、uh, the, as, a, as a core team, the, the RBS will be the canonical. So that,、uh, the, some teams, some part of our members are working on the Interchanging the information between the RBS and the RBI, which is the, the you know, the Sobe the type information. So that,、uh, so that 
we can share the we can share the type information between the sorbet and the, the steep or other other RBS ecosystems. And then the, for the far distance future, so that we hope we can we can reduce the burden of the RBS because of the sufficiently smart compilers can uh, estimate and guess the 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 type from the from the runtime information and the, the I mean the, the static comp compile time information so that uh, so that you don't have to worry about the the manual annotation of that. The last question what do you think we the future of Ruby will uh, will look like 10 years from now? Ah so the uh, I wish <laughs> I wish I the Ruby is Ruby, but uh performance is better, the the developer experience is better, and uh and the X systems grows and uh, we are making values and money and uh, and uh, and hopefully I will be healthy and uh Working on, still working on Ruby. That that's my dream. Uh, in ten years, I will be what sixty eight. <laughs> but uh, I hope I'm healthy and uh, you know healthy enough to keep working on Ruby as a you know benevolent dictator of Ruby programming language. <clears throat> and besides that. Uh, as I said before, the I I'm glad if I can nourish, you know, the train, the new generation of the, you know, uh, the candidates of the my successors. And then, <coughs> actually, right now, no one in the core teams is uh is willing to become my successors uh, because you know if you want to work in design if you are really really interested in the designing programming language and then you you design your or your own programming language and then, and then you know the keeping keeping programming language Ruby alive is requires you know deep Lava motivation, and then I, I'm lucky to have my and the Ruby is my child, so that it is natural for me to you know to care about Ruby. But uh, you know, for my successors, Ruby is a kind of the you know the stepchild. <laughs> so it is harder to to. Care them them enough so that, but that if 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 someone in the in the audience uh, have some idea to become to be like my to become my successor or the you know the designer of the Ruby programming language, and uh, if you are interested, uh, just contact me. <laughs> And then, you know, I I don't think I can promise you anything right now, but uh, I think I can work with you and then tell some tips about the, the language design or something like that. Yeah, I'm... Uh, well, <laughs> that's all, folks. And then... Uh, I really, really expect for the Ruby uh, future of Ruby, and uh, I believe our future is bright. So the look at the bright side, not the dark side of the of the the gem. Okay, uh, thank for the thank you for standing my poor language and. Uh, <laughs>
And then,、uh, thank you for joining、uh, attending the Ruby conferences. And then,、uh, I hope I, I can physically join you next year, Ruby conferences. See ya.